Okay, sure. this is the uh, September 22nd, 2015 meeting of the East Long Meadow Board of Assessors. It's 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, bring the meeting to order. Uh, we are, the meeting is being recorded by LCAT, and we have, we're also making a recording for, for our own, for our minutes. Um, first, I'll review and open, the open and executive session meetings from the minutes of September 1st. Mr. Chairman, I have read uh, both the open meeting session minutes and the executive session me meeting minutes, found them to be in order as to content and presentation, and I move that they be accepted as such. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the following reports were approved by the DOR. The uh, LA3 sales report, we, do we have to sign anything? I'm asking for your signature since we had just a couple of updates. And just sign anywhere on there. The updates that we had changed is they asked like where the other parcel was when we had two lots combined. Um, they had one that they didn't feel was a government sale that had a deed restriction, those type of, of issues. So but they're all set. And then we have the LA-4 classification report. And there were no changes to, to the original, so no more signatures are needed. Uh, if you'd like to review it again, um, those were approved by the Department of Revenue. And we have the LA-13 growth report. We have new signatures, there's, a, there's a, been a minor change. Uh, and that change had to do with um, moving all of our chapter land parcels into mixed use. I coded it as one lump sum, and they wanted the actual count, so we just changed that number to 16. But mostly cosmetic type changes. Correct. The bottom line of the new growth did not change. And we have the LA-15 Interim Adjustment Report, and there are current changes due to what happened on the LA-3. Exactly. So that was the only one that, because of that LA-3 change, it automatically defaults to that one. Now, do we have any more changes before we get, we get to prove values? Our values are now approved. So, so we're ready to go, so we're ready to go into the classification hearing at this point with the, from the value standpoint. Correct. Correct. Ready when you are, Bill. Okay, we have the fiscal year 17 new growth letter to the uh, appropriations committee and the accountant. Um, um, you, you, would you uh, review what's on the letter? Well, basically we discussed um, that although for a couple of years we've had a large amount of new growth that exceeded our projections, we do not anticipate us always to be receiving these one-time windfalls, such as the quip that we're getting this year with the electric companies with a couple of our personal properties that was much higher than what we anticipated. So we had discussed at our last meeting and I believe the board was in agreement that we might be wise to lower our uh, projection and that's all it is, is a guesstimate of a number of where we think we will um, reach. So when we get to our fiscal 17 budgeting process, the appropriations committee will have a better number to work with from our standpoint. Uh, I do know that our new homes and our condos are declining uh, as opposed to a couple of years ago. So I don't want appropriations to over budget and then us not being able to meet the budget. Yes, a lot of this new growth is one is, is one time things and, and there are slowdowns in some of the areas and the appropriations committee will will have less new growth for the next fiscal year than they have this on, on the, the, the LA forms we just signed. Right. If you did look at your information, I did put a spreadsheet together of the seven-year average mm -hmm. so you can see what the growth was and how many single new single-family homes and condos. And then the one-time only was at the lower part. 
So when I take an average, um, we come up with between that 350 to three um, to 400, depending on where we're standing, we had one or two years that were higher because of a lot of new homes. So I'm projecting, and it's just a projection that we need to be closer to the 350 mark as opposed to the 400,000 mark, but I am looking for guidance from the assessors if they have more information that we could provide. Now my position is you need, we need to lower the estimate for next year. I'm in agreement with that, simply because uh, some of our sales have indicated um, that some changes might be in order, and uh, as we get into this year, so I would I would be inclined to say we should be a little bit more conservative than we have in the past. Uh, no comment. Okay, the next item is a 2000 fiscal year 2015 motor vehicle excise commitment in the amount of 78,514.76. That's the new cars and things like that since the last billing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And then we have the formal notice to the accountant for the months of September. And then we have the LA3 sales report for the month of August. Now this report is fairly recent and is subject to change as we find out more information on the actual sales. But this is, and these, this report goes to state and it becomes part of the uh, public record at the state level. Any comments on this? Well, I was concerned about a few that are, the assessment sales ratio is uh, below 95. Um, one in particular, I think it's around 60, 65. Uh, and so I think that gives us an indication that next time around when we either do an interim or a full reval, we have to look at the older housing stocks and see, mm -hmm. study the styles and so forth. I agree with you 100%. Um, I did notice that the one that was at 65, I only see one. We yeah. This is like the second or third one in that area that mm -hmm. has been, um, the sale price has been extremely high in comparison to our assessment. And it seems like each year we've been bringing down, because we're doing a mass appraisal. Yes. And it's hard because some of these are super improved, and if we haven't been able to get into it, we can't. The, right. the nice thing is, is when they are on the MLS, a picture does tell a thousand words, so we can get a lot of information from that. Good. Not all are on the MLS, some are private sales. Yeah. So when we get to next summer and are studying the, uh, and are setting the values for next year, uh, these sales will, and the sales from other months in the year will, uh, of 2015 will be the basis of data for that. Yeah. I think though. 1.131 might be uh, not an arm's length sale. Um, the 1.13, kind of at the maybe five or six from the bottom, Yeah. it was on the MLS. It was sold as is, as the um, 1.25, kind of more towards the top. That said, inspections for informational purposes only sold as is. So that means that there are probably, um, you know, you could do a, a mechanical inspection. You will find issues, and they're not going to repair it. That's why they have a discounted price. That's what I suspect. And I suspect some of the You don't want to call them non um, We certainly can. Again, we're still reviewing because if we end up getting into the property, 
and then we bring that assessment down, then it might be considered an arm's length by the time we get to get a good review of the property. So I do have that information attached to those property record right. cards where it's saying, you know, informational purposes only for us to give a review. And we usually if it just says as is, like we discount it, like that's yeah. not a good sale right away, boom, right. throw it away. Well, I certainly can put an encode for other when it says as is. Yes. Um, we just have to document all encodes to DOR, which isn't a problem when you have the MLS listing. And you say that one was, was on MLS. It was yep. on the open market. Yep. Yeah. Both of those were. I feel as though some of these homes have been improved over the years and might have better kitchens, better bathrooms, mm -hmm. have been updated. Right. Uh, no, no, I mean, it's the market, though. I've been you telling think so? you. Yeah, absolutely. Like that one that's at 70 like the second, up at the top? Yeah, the second one down, you know. I don't know if you think that's a lot of point nine one. No, oh, I think that that well, that's that's not as bad. Uh, this point seventy eight would yeah. be of concern to me. I think uh, so. I saw that on the MLS in interior pictures, and I was amazed that that's what it sold for because really? it was not, you know, like modernized. It was, you know, you might have had a new bathroom sink, but the kitchen was still the original. Yeah. So, and I can't guarantee that one, but I do look at each one of them. And I'm amazed at when I'm looking at the original kitchens painted white. Yeah. Or the knotty that? pine that I've been seeing. Lots of knotty pine. Now back really? to that one, I know you're not going to change the second one from the bottom, you know, was one of those sold on Zillow and Craigslist oh. that you are well, kicking I, out. I, I certainly Yuko? can yeah. put it in. It's, I guess... Part of the future. I guess my... Maybe I need to start reviewing the Zillow, like I do review MLS. I actually did the appraisal on that myself, and she had appraisal. They had appraisal done for themselves, and mm -hmm. what to put it on for. But I think you're you're kicking them out too quickly. Yeah, be happy to put that down as an arm's length. Because we had a couple last time, remember? Mm -hmm. We discussed the same thing. Yeah. Well, when's on Tanglewood? When you're in September 21st, these numbers are preliminary. They're subject to mm -hmm. change as we find yes. out more about them. Yeah. But now even the uh, the realtors, mm -hmm. uh, Codwell Banker doesn't put anything in the paper anymore. So I mean that's a change. It's all online. Really? No more open houses when you open it for Codwell Banker. Oh. They've they've skipped out and do mass live and mm -hmm. social media only. Really? Yeah. They've made so. Yeah, that's that's all. It's all part of it. Yeah. No one reads the paper. That's what they figured out. Yeah. Well, I will uncode the second from you the You don't bottom. have to. I don't want to take you out of your comfort yeah. zone, Diane. Nope. Not my comfort zone. Is there I'm any not, further discussion on LA3? It's going to make the state ask us to do more work. Because it will throw our racials right out the window. Yeah, well, I'm sure parts I mean, of if, Eastern if Mass say, are even above that. So. Yeah. If you're saying that truly that's what that parcel was worth, I don't know what it went on the market for. Do you have any idea? Or did it sell at the asking price? Uh, 262. 262, so that wasn't much of a change. Just mark it that we revisit it mm -hmm. before we finalize and, for next And make year. note that, you know, it's a second LA3 that we've had, too. Yeah. In the same situation. Is there any further on the LA3? Not for me. Is that? Nope. I'm the good. next thing is that we have a tax classification hearing date set with the select by the selectmen. It's tentative for October 13th, 2015. Now this is before the, the town meeting on October 18th, so we don't know um, what the spending is going to be until after the town meeting. So, so we will have to uh, use the maximum levy limit for Illustrating, uh, illustrating the rates and the effect of, uh, uh, of the illustrations for that hearing. We won't have any, we can't put them together. They're going to invite any. us though, right? Are they going to invite us this year? Um, I believe that we attend, I can't 
speak for the Board of Selectmen how much they're going to ask us to right. present. Okay. Um, Less is more. I just want to advise the chairman I won't be in attendance. I am, have, I'm scheduled for surgery on October 7th. So I won't be around for the classification hearing. <laughs> so well, I'm, take care of yourself. I will. I'm sure that Bill will be able to present um, if the Board of Selectmen ask us up to their table. Mm -hmm. um, well, they generally do. It is. The state law is very specific that it's their meeting. Although we certainly have, we certainly have input to it. We yeah. have no input so to it. I think if you just uh, pr prepare the same as mm -hmm. you have in the past, it seems yeah. to be a very informative packet. Right. I think I would think that's all that's needed. Right. And I have already begun to do that. Now, just so the board is aware that originally our meeting was set for the 19th, people thought that was being a little too ambitious to, uh, I'm sorry, the 18th, to have this special, what date is it? The 19th. The 19th. The 19th. Um, to have the special town meeting. They were trying to push it into September, uh, November 16th or mm -hmm. even into December. <clears throat> Um, Tom, the collector, Sarah, the accountant, and I really pushed to say, no, this is very important for several reasons. <laughs> um, one, we don't want to jeopardize not getting our tax bills out in a timely manner, right. uh, which would then postpone all deadlines mm -hmm. and have to get permission from the, the Department of Revenue to even send out preliminary, and that to me would be the worst case scenario. <coughs> Then we also have our DOR advisor who is accustomed to reviewing all of our documents, is going out on surgery on November 3rd. Oh, that's right. The and so with him out and the retirements that have taken place at state level, we're going to have to get into the queue. So we're trying to push to get our <coughs> documents in in a timely fashion. The Board of Selectmen did not uh, had suggested we could meet for the tax classification hearing after, I believe they at mentioned, after the uh, special town meeting, but I just wasn't sure that was a super appropriate <coughs> time to be doing that. So I did say that we could do it prior to then, and again, using the maximum levy, which would at least show how rates would change if they had a split tax rate right. and for them to be aware that it's for illustrative purposes only. Sarah and I do, <laughs> Sarah and I do plan on um, meeting the week of October 5th to pull together all the information with the anticipation of what will pass at or what's on the town meeting agenda and we may be able to come a little closer but we're going to do our best to get the correct information. Yeah. Just just looking at the draft warrant, it doesn't appear that there's anything from raised from taxation. Or um, is there? Well, there were a couple that said raise an appropriate or other. Oh, okay. Um, the first group of them were all, um, uh, what do I want to call it? Community preservation. Yeah. And then I believe when we got to Article 5 and 6, it said raise and appropriate or other. Oh. Article 7 really shouldn't even be raise and appropriate, and I just spoke to our interim town administrator to make him aware of that. They are supposed to be just accepting the provision, not raising and appropriating for a future fiscal year. That's Article 7? Uh, yes. Um, Eight, nine is from retur uh, retained earnings yeah. through free cash, free cash. Yep, free cash, free cash. Article 12 is just to adopt a provision. 13 is just to move money from two accounts into a new account. Article 14, from my understanding, is going to be free cash. Um, 16 is up in the air, and I thought there was one more small one, I might have missed it. No, Article 11, oh, you had already said free cash. Mm -hmm. So, 
there are a couple raisin appropriates, but yeah. I don't know if they're even being recommended or not. Okay. And they're, they're, they're pretty minor. Okay, yeah. All right. Now the next item on the agenda is the GIS system. And as the board is aware that due to a retirement um, coming up soon, that the person who's been doing our mapping um, and coordinating our GIS uh, will no longer be working for the town and the DPW feels that they can fund us through fiscal 16. I did have a meeting this morning with a group of parties involved and the person who's been working on our GIS also does mapping updates for his main job and he's working as a consultant here so I do feel he's fully capable of keeping us up to date for fiscal 16. As I spoke at the meeting, we are going to need some, um, not bids, um, can't think of the word, sorry, but he has to give us a quote um, for an upcoming year and we may want to look into a couple of um, other sources where we can get our uh, mapping provided. Our responsibility is to get the first layer of mapping complete. That is our responsibility. That is the parcel splits and subdivisions and having, uh, being able to identify a property. There are many other layers to our GIS and majority of them all fall to the DPW as they're mapping their sewers, the fire hydrants, the stop signs, etc. So I think DPW realizes that a lot of it is still in their area. Um, we are just the foundation of all of our mapping. So I have already checked into many communities surrounding us and I have found that there seems to be a commonality with two different companies that majority of the communities use and who they are having to web host. So we do have some options and I'm getting some idea of prices. So more will follow but we will need to have kind of a decision of the direction we're going to go by December when we have to start dealing with FY17 budgets. Now we definitely have to budget to, for this and congratulations to the retiring person for the fine work in the past. Thanks. And that's all I have with GIS. Okay, we have a pair of planning board decisions. Uh, anything that has any particular impact on this office? One new lot. Yeah, one new lot. And so that will be addressed when we are doing our um, fiscal 17s. Is there any new business or old business? No. No. Okay, then it's time to uh, move to executive session for the, for the discussion of discretionary excise abatements and, um, service con and, and, and service contracts. Um, this requires a roll call vote. No, we will not be returning to open session. This requires a roll call vote. Mrs. Salnier? Yes. Mr. Grudgeon? Yes. Mr. Johnston? Yes. 